voices echoing down through the centuries. Voices sounding in your imagination. Britain is a threat to peace. It is an island of troublemakers who agitate our land in Gaul. I, Claudius, demand that this island of Britain be subjugated, be brought to heel, be conquered. Britain must be conquered. <laughs> jump and we all jump but what about those of us who have to do the jumping he's the one who gets into the history books but what about me and the people like me who came to this place where you are now our feet trod these pavements our voices echoed down these corridors we lived and worked laughed and wept here can you imagine us imagine me for instance as i sail across the sea from what you call france and what we know as Gaul. Gaul was all right. Vineyards, sun and land all the way to home. Britain, we were given to understand, was fog, was freezing and fighting. But the day I came was clear and even bright. The creek which winds between woods and fields was fat with fish and the land rich as cream. Wasn't my lucky day though as we bumped against the landing stage with me all clobbered up with kit and weapons and Zeus knows what, I dropped my helmet in the drink. Which is how you know I was here. It got found by a fisherman when they put it in a glass case. That's fame, I suppose. So here I am, building this a great big wooden storehouse. You see the holes we made for the posts, hefty great posts, close together. On top of them the floor and the walls and the roof for a place to store the grain. What about the fighting, you say? Well, on account of my losing my helmet, the centurion said I wasn't fit to be a frontline soldier. So here I am at the supply base. There wasn't much here except the barns and a yard for blacksmith and a bridge over the stream. But it isn't so bad, really. The barns are raised off the ground. No rats, no damp, better than tents. <laughs> Perhaps losing my helmet wasn't such a bad thing after all. A soldier speaks from the beginnings of Fishbourne as we know it. A military base set up in the friendly territory of the British tribe of the Atribates. Near the town of Novi Amargus, we know it as Chichester, and their king, well, more about him later. From this friendly country, the Emperor Claudius could send his legions out to conquer in the southwest and support his armies throughout Britain. And the date? Well, not long after AD 43. But then what happened? The army went, the civilians moved in, and then later we came. Across the sea, the villa, the stonemasons. I was young when I first got here. Build the houses, they said. Big houses. Like the big houses in Rome. We put up something which showed these Britons what houses could be like. And that was that, I thought. Back to Italy. Back to build villas, public buildings, palaces, build a career. And then they said, there's a big job for you, the biggest one yet. Where? I didn't believe them when they told me. Back in Britain. Whose mad idea is that? The Emperor. Oh well, if the Emperor of Aspasian says so. And then they showed me the plans. Well, I really would have thought them mad. But the Emperor was putting down the cash. 
I'll tell you, it was bigger than Nero's palace in Rome. And the materials we had to get. Wood, hundreds of forest oaks, stone from Bracklesham, Benbridge and Purbeck, lime for mortar, clay, sand, bricks, tiles and glass. And then we dug, made the land level, and we carved, hoisted, hammered, hauled and built, built, built. The builders finished their work, and the owners moved in, and perhaps the owner's children. The builders left such a mess behind. When we moved in, it looked like a builder's yard. But then the gardeners got to work, and that's what I like best, the gardeners. First they dug out beds, then planted trees and shrubs. And when you looked out through the pillars of the great porches, you saw green, green upon green, and smell the scent of the herbs. Cool. 
courtyard. Pavement. Plastered walls. Colour. Elegance. across the fields to a place of tumbled walls and sprouting weeds. I was a young man when it happened. We saw the flames from the city. The sky was red. We were helpless. We ran out across the fields, but the roof had fallen in. in the heat, wood charred, everything destroyed. All that was left to do was to rake through the ashes. Perhaps the fire didn't matter really. The building was old, decrepit. The state rooms had fallen out of use years before my time. I knew the people who lived in the old private wing. They'd been doing well for themselves, saved up for a new heating system. It was never used. It was not worth trying to rebuild the house. Not really safe to be outside city walls nowadays. Rome is losing her grip on the empire. That's the trouble. We are too close to the sea here, too easy for pirate ships, the invaders, new conquerors even. What was left, nature and man took over and used. Stones were taken, leaving trenches where walls had been. Weeds, grass, trees, ploughed pasture churned, mixed, and smoothed out the landscape. 1,500 summers and winters worked the soil until... In 1960, waterboard men digging a trench uncovered a Roman grave, and archaeologist Margaret Rule was called to the site. We had to jump in their trenches and simply survey what we could see, walls and floors, mosaic pavement, and then the waterboard engineers backfilled and moved on to a new piece of work. And the following year, 1961, we managed to organise proper excavations. And for eight years, teams of volunteers came from all over the country to work on the site under Professor Barry Cunliffe, and gradually they pieced together the little shreds of evidence and the coins and the pottery and the building itself to build up the story of occupation from 43 AD until the end of the first century. How many people were involved in the excavation? Nearly a thousand volunteers joined in this work. They came from all over this country, America and Europe. And the story built up until we realized that here at Fishbourne, we had a large Roman building, the largest Roman building, in fact, north of the Alps. Oh, well, I like it because it gives me good physical exercise, which is a nice contrast to my normal job. Finding the finding of rain makes it very much more exciting. It's just physical exercise. I suppose gardening would be all right. But um, there's always the excitement of finding something at the bottom of the hole, however deep the hole goes down. It's terribly rewarding because you might have to go through a lot of hard stuff, but when you get to the bottom, it's all fun. I notice my own trench mostly. When I'm waiting for a pick or a barrel, I look at somebody else's job. I wanted a holiday as different from my regular job as I could make it. Therefore, I wanted an out-of-door one instead of indoor, physical action instead of mental action, and something where I was organised instead of having to organise. And now Wright has come back to this site. First the diggers, and now 
to you. Millions of visitors from all parts of the world far larger even than the Roman Empire. Many more visitors than ever came here to the court of a British prince. And as you see the things brought from the earth, perhaps in your mind the years will vanish. And you'll see that they were humans too. And in your mind, you'll hear the voices of fish talk.